Hello everyone. Today we will discuss questions on ALNA. Now first question is the site determination of ALNA. See ALNA it is an example of the long bone. So it has two ends upper end and the lower end. Another thing it is the bone of forearm. So we have two bones in the forearm. Medially placed bone is the ALNA and laterally placed bone is the radius. Okay. So first to determine the side of ALNA it is very easy. You can determine it. Determine this side by the upper end only. See, first look for the upper end. At the upper end, we have two processes are there. Okay, so these are the two processes and these two notches are present at the upper end of ulna. Now, this notch, it is directed forward. So, this concavity, it should be at the frontal aspect. So, it will determine your anterior aspect as well. So, you have determined the upper aspect. You have determined the frontal and dorsal aspect. Now, you have to look for the notch. So, this notch it is for the radius bone so this one radius it is placed on the lateral side so this is the lateral aspect of ulna and this one is the medial aspect of ulna so now you can see that this is the medial bone so this is lateral surface so this is this one is the right ulna I am showing you another bone that is left ulna see this is the upper end concavity it is directed at the front here you can see the radial notch. So this is left ulna. You can also confirm it with the presence of the stylor process at the lower end. This stylor process it is at the posterior medial aspect. Describe upper end of ulna. Here you can see in the upper end we have two projections. So the uppermost projection that is known as the olecranon process. Another projection that is known as the coronoid process. And we have two notches. One is the trochlear notch and another one that is the radial notch. Now this olecranon process it is a big like projection and the concavity it is on the uh, frontal aspect. If you see it has five surfaces this is the superior surface of olecranon process. This one is the anterior surface of olecranon process which also forms the part of the trochlear notch. Then we have medial surface of olecranon process then lateral surface of olecranon process and then we have the posterior surface of olecranon process. So here we have five surfaces, superior surface, anterior surface, then medial surface, then lateral surface and another one is the posterior surface. Then another process that is the coronoid process. So at the uh, here with the coronoid process we have superior surface, anterior surface, then this one is the medial surface and this is the lateral surface. On the lateral surface, we have a notch and this notch is known as the radial notch. On the anterior surface here, we have a tuberosity. This is known as the ulnar tuberosity. Now, trochlear notch. Trochlear notch, it articulates with the trochlea of humerus and forms the part of the elbow joint. And this radial notch, it articulates or it fits with the head of the radius and forms the superior radio ulnar joint. Which muscle inserted on the olecranon process? So on the superior surface of olecranon process, we have insertion of the triceps brachii muscle. On the posterior part, we have insertion of triceps brachii and at the front, there is a bursa. Then insertion on the coronoid process. So this is coronoid process, anterior on the anterior surface of coronal process, on this tuberosity, ulnar tuberosity, we have insertion of brachialis muscle. And on the lateral surface of coronal process, just below the radial notch, we have here supinator crest. And this supinator crest and the area in front of the supinator crest, it gives origin to supinator muscle. How many bones articulate with ulna? Here you can see upper end of ulna, this trochlear notch, it articulates with the trochlea of humerus, okay. This olecranon process, it fits with the olecranon fossa during the extension. So this is from the ulnohumeral joint which is a part of the elbow joint. Then another articulation that is with this radial notch, head of radius, it fits with this notch and from the superior superior radio ulnar joint. Then these two interosseous membrane they form the middle radio ulnar joint and at the lower aspect this head of ulna it fits with the ulnar notch of the radius and forms the inferior radio ulnar joint. Which artery supplies nutrient artery to ulna? 
so here anterior interosseous artery a branch from the anterior interosseous artery it gives a nutrient artery to the ulna which end of ulna is known as the growing end so lower end of ulna that is the growing end here you can remember the dictum to the elbow i go from the knee i flee so here you can see the direction of nutrient artery it is directed upward so opposite this is the nutrient foramen so the direction of nutrient artery it is upward so the growing end is the lower end attachment on medial surface of coronoid process see here this is the coronoid process and this is the medial surface of coronoid process so on medial surface you can remember it as a family planning for families family f stand for flexor digitorum superficialis planning p stands for the pronator teres muscle then f stand for the flexor digitorum profundus muscle and sometimes occasionally it also gives origin to the flexor pollicis longus so flex family planning for family now which are the attachments on medial surface of olecranon process so on medial surface of olecranon process before backward here we have attachment of two ligaments and two muscles so lig uh, ligament it is the capsular ligament of elbow joint then we have the attachment of ulnar collateral ligament then here we have the origin of flexor carpi ulnaris muscle and then flexor digitorum profundus origin of flexor digitorum profundus it is continuous with the medial surface of uh, uh, coronary process as well as the shaft of the ulna now attachment on the posterior border of ulna so here this is the posterior border of ulna this posterior border of ulna it gives an attachment to the three muscles along with its from its aponeurosis so these three muscles you can remember it as a enjoy fun fair e stand for the extensor carpi ulnaris fun f stand for the flexor carpi ulnaris and fair f stand for the flexor digitorum profundus so flexor digitorum profundus its origin is from the medial surface of olecranon process from the medial surface of coronoid process as well as the posterior border and upper one fourth part of this anterior surface and medial surface of ulna which muscle is attached on the lower part of anterior surface of ulna so at the anterior surface lower part of ulna this lower one fourth part gives origin to the pronator quadratus muscle which muscle is attached on the lateral part of posterior surface here you can see this is the olecranon process so this is the posterior this is point of elbow and this one is the posterior surface this is lateral part of posterior surface so lateral part of posterior surface it gives origin to the muscles which passes to the thumb so at abductor pollicis longus then extensor pollicis longus and another tendon that is for the index muscle index finger sorry so that is extensor indices attachment on styloid process ulnar collateral ligament is attached on styloid process this structure passes through the groove which lies between the head of ulna and the styloid process so here the tendon of extensor carpi ulnaris it passes through this groove now another question is what is isosceles triangle or it is also known as the equilateral triangle here you can see this is the lower end of humerus this is this one is the olecranon fossa this ulna this one is the ulna and this is the olecranon process so in an extended elbow olecranon process it fits with this olecranon fossa so here this one is the lateral epicondyle and this is medial epicondyle so medial epicondyle then olecranon uh, process tip of olecranon process and this lateral epicondyle this three lies in a same horizontal line in an extended elbow but during flexion you can see during flexion these three points they form a triangle okay these three structures they form a triangle and this triangle is known as the equilateral triangle or isosceles triangle what is the functional importance of this triangle so the alteration of position of three bony points indicates the dislocation of elbow joint or fracture of the lower end of humerus or at the upper end of elbow.